We're going to look now at the process of using PDF Maker within Microsoft Office Excel to create Acrobat PDF files. I'm working with the file sales.xlsx. This spreadsheet has two worksheet tabs. One sheet called Sales includes some simple tabular data as well as a chart. And the second sheet called Team has another table in a different format and at a different size. We want to convert this file to PDF. As we've mentioned in earlier videos, Acrobat has installed the PDF Maker as a separate tab in the Office ribbon. When we click this tab, we see the PDF tools, and there are fewer here than we saw in Microsoft Word. We have the option to create PDFs, to send PDFs as email attachments, and to send PDFs as part of a review process. We also have the option to create a PDF and run an action, which is a topic that we'll cover in an advanced video. As with Word, we can click on Preferences to gain access to the options that control the conversion process. Here we have a dialog that is a bit simpler than the one we saw in Microsoft Word. In this case, we have only two tabs in the dialog, one for security with the same settings we've seen and which we'll cover in an advanced video on security. In the Settings tab, the top section is largely the same as we saw in Microsoft Word. We have our conversion settings with all the built-in Acrobat presets available, and the default, as before, is set to Standard. We also have the Advanced Settings button that will open the PDF Settings dialog box to allow us to change the presets on the fly if necessary. The rest of these options in the top section are similar to what we've seen with Word. View the Adobe PDF result in Acrobat, prompt for a file name, and convert document information from the file properties data into Acrobat PDF metadata. Down here in the application settings, we have the option to attach the source file and to embed enhanced features during the conversion, create bookmarks, add links, and enable accessibility. With an Excel spreadsheet, bookmarks are created for each sheet in the workbook, and the name of the sheet becomes the bookmark text. The option to convert comments into Adobe PDF style comments is right here in this dialog as well, and we have a couple of options for formatting the pages. We'll click on OK to accept these settings, and when we click on Create PDF, we get a prompt for selecting the Excel sheets for the conversion. We can choose to print from the entire workbook, just a selection, or specific sheets, which is the initial default. In fact, the default is to print just the current open sheet from the workbook. We can add more sheets by highlighting them in the left column and clicking on Add, and it moves over. We can even reorder the sheets by highlighting and then using the Move Up and Move Down buttons. We can remove a sheet from the list by clicking Remove, and of course we have the option to add all. And in this case, we'll go ahead and add both sheets into our workbook. When we click on Convert to PDF, we'll be prompted for the file name and location, and we'll choose the desktop, and then we'll click on Save. The converter works, and the file is launched in Acrobat. We can zoom in and see that the quality is reasonable, which we'd expect with the standard preset. And we see that there are two pages, just as if we had printed this document from Excel to a printer. Additionally, if we click on the icon to open the Bookmarks panel, we can see two bookmarks created from the worksheet names. By clicking them, we can navigate immediately to each page. Let's close this file and go back to Excel. In the file we just created, we chose the sheets we wanted to print into the PDF, but recall the other option for printing a selection? Let's try that now. You might receive a workbook with tons of data, and you just want to extract a part of that information into a PDF. In the workbook, we'll drag just over this section of the data right here in this table. Now when we click on Create PDF, we'll set the conversion range to Selection. And notice this part becomes grayed out. And now we'll click on Convert to PDF. After selecting the location, and again we'll choose the desktop, and overwrite the previous file. We see the PDF launched, and sure enough, it includes just the data that we selected. 
This can be very convenient for assembling snippets of data or charts from large and complex workbooks. If you're on a Windows machine and need to convert Excel workbook data into PDF format, the PDF Maker provides quite a few conveniences and capabilities above and beyond the basic PDF printer.